he's mostly fair. He's somewhat reasonable. And in his courtroom, justice will be served probably. This is Judge Gavigan. The plaintiffs, Derek and Maria Broadus, the new owners of a house costing over $1 million, are suing the defendants, John and Andrea Woods, the former owners of the house, for concealing critical information about the property. The plaintiffs say if they had been made aware of the dark secrets surrounding the house beforehand, they never would have bought it to begin with. The defendants say they didn't think the secrets were a big deal, and there's no way they're responsible. The plaintiffs are suing for compensatory damages, punitive damages, and reimbursement of legal costs. I'm Rob Gavigan, and while I may not actually be a judge, I will be your dark guide down the road of mystery and fear as I tell you about the chilling case of the Watcher Letters. If you're into these kinds of dark topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel now so you don't forget, because you're not going to want to miss what's next. But first... The house in question at the center of the trial that I only slightly dramatized, located at 657 Boulevard, Westfield, New Jersey, was a dream come true for the Broadus family of five. The father, Derek, came from a humble background as he grew up in a working class family in Maine. But with hard work, he had moved his way up the ladder and eventually became a senior vice president at an insurance company in Manhattan. His tireless work ethic allowed Derek to afford the spacious six-bedroom, $1.3 million home. His wife, Maria, actually grew up in Westfield, more precisely just a few blocks from their new home, which was one of the biggest reasons the Broadduses were so excited they had closed on this exact property. The town is also known for being one of the safest areas to live in the whole United States. Sounds like a perfect place to raise your kids, right? Well, maybe if your family lives anywhere else in the area rather than at 657 Boulevard, something that Derek and Maria learned very, very quickly in June of 2014 when they received a strange letter. It was merely three days after purchasing the house that they started the renovations they had been planning to make there, when Derek checked the mail and discovered a small, card-sized envelope addressed in thick handwriting to, quote, the new owner. The first lines of the letter inside began as follows. Dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, Allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. Ah, it always feels nice to be welcomed, doesn't it? Nothing alarming, probably just a greeting from a friendly neighbor. Or perhaps one of those welcome to the neighborhood flyers from a local business owner, something like that. However, as Derek kept reading the typed letter, it became evident that the piece of paper he held in his hands was not a brochure, nor an invitation to a neighborhood barbecue. No, it was something far more sinister. The initial warmth of the letter swiftly morphed into something more bizarre and unsettling at the second part of the letter. 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now, and as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s, and my father watched it in the 1960s. It is now my time. Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. All right, so we can all agree, someone unknown telling you their family has been watching your house for generations that you literally bought a few days prior is disturbing enough. However, this didn't stir Derek Broadus too much. He didn't feel it was something to contact authorities over. But then came the third part of the letter. You have children. I have seen them. 
Do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your old house too small for the growing family? Or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. Needless to say, whoever the author of the letter was, they had just crossed the line. The first part could have maybe been brushed off as a twisted joke, but as soon as someone mentions luring in children, things get rather serious. Understandably disturbed, Derek called the Westfield police, but they proved to be of no help, as there wasn't much for them to work with, certainly nothing to lead to an arrest. In today's world, we're also used to communicating electronically, no matter if it's through email, text messages, or social media interactions. Handwriting is something of a dying art. When we type a message to someone on a keyboard or a touchscreen, a digital footprint that authorities can follow often remains. However, things get a little more complicated when the message is delivered the old-fashioned way. In regards to the disturbing letter the Broadus family had received, there was no return address on the envelope, but in the conclusion of the letter, the writer gave themselves a nickname, the only clue to who they could have possibly been. Who am I? There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I am in one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one. Look out any of the many windows in 657 Boulevard at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Let the party begin. The Watcher. I can only imagine that this was the last kind of party the new homeowners were expecting to be invited to. Derek, of course, did not intend to take part in whatever sick games the Watcher had in mind for his family, so after contacting the police, he and Maria wrote an email to John and Andrea Woods, the couple who had sold them the house. The Broadduses wanted to know if the previous owners had any idea who the Watcher might be. Not just because the Woods had lived at 657 Boulevard for 23 years, but because the anonymous author of the worrying letters had written something strange. Well, something else strange. And it concerned John and Andrea Woods directly. I asked the Woods to bring me young blood, and it looks like they listened. The next morning, Andrea Woods replied to the email. She and her husband had in fact also received an odd note signed by someone calling themselves The Watcher while they lived at 657 Boulevard. Some would say a thing like that might be worth mentioning when you're selling your house. By the way, a stalker is included in the price. However, Andrea said they only ever got one letter from The Watcher, which they received a short time before they were to move out and had thrown it away without much thought. Unfortunately for the Broadduses, the first letter was just the start. Things were about to get more serious and more frightening. Yo, homies, it's your boy Rob B. Wicked coming at you with a dope game that's sweeping the nation. So big ups to our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, a global free-to-play RPG that all the coolest cats are playing. Smash that link in the description or scan the dank QR code on screen at any time to dive into the swagness. In Raid, you can unlock tons of ill champions and use them to totally wreck your enemies, grow their power, and throw down on some challenges to get some of that sweet in-game Skrilla that'll help you own these screets. Whether you want to take on other players in the game or just BTFO some janky AI opponents, Raid's got you, son. You can even start or join clan so you'll have a crew to go out banging with. But you all know that the champs are where it's at for me. Brackus is a favorite of mine and it has nothing to do with the fact that we used to go steady until he hopped off. It's because he's a scary MF'er. And who needs a pitbull as an accessory to their masculinity when you got Virgum Car? He's a fearless companion and a good boy, and what the hell is that? There are so many champs to get from so many factions, it's dope af. They're kind of like them Pokemon. Gotta grab them all, am I right, fellow kids? 
any time is the best time to get started with Raid. If you use my link or QR code, new players get 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, 1 ancient shard, and a free champion Tyrell. All that cheddar will be available to claim in your inbox for the next 30 days only, so secure that bag, son. Thanks to all of you who do check out Raid, you're doing me a solid. And now, back to the episode, homeboy. Mr. and Mrs. Bratis, the workers have been busy and I have been watching you unload carfuls of your personal belongings. The dumpster is a nice touch. Have they found what is in the walls, yet? In time they will. I am pleased to know your names now and the name of the young blood you have brought to me. You certainly say their names often. The second letter arrived two weeks after the first. This time, the Watcher addressed Derek and Maria directly, oddly misspelling their names. But at the same time, the letter listed the three broadest children by birth order and their nicknames, the ones Maria had used to call her children to come back inside while they were outside playing. The letter continued. Will the young blood play in the basement? Or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. All of the windows and doors and 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. Who am I? I am the Watcher and have been in control of 657 Boulevard for the better part of two decades now. The Woods family turned it over to you. It was their time to move on and kindly sold it when I asked them to. Needless to say, after the second letter, Derek and Maria decided not to bring the kids to the house anymore. In fact, they felt so threatened by the Watcher, so violated, they put the renovations on hold to take a time out and rethink on whether they should fully move into their dream home or figure out a way to distance themselves from it. What came next certainly was an argument for the latter. Of course, the Broadus's hesitation did not go unnoticed by their anonymous associate. A third letter arriving two weeks after the previous one read, Where have you gone to? 657 Boulevard is missing you. At this point, Derek and Maria were feeling completely paranoid and desperate for answers. They continued to reach out to Westfield Police. They enlisted private investigators. Derek even contacted a couple of FBI agents and hired a forensic linguist to perform language analysis on the cryptic letters. Still, despite all the efforts, including DNA tests and countless hours used to interview neighbors, the Watcher's identity remained a mystery. It was as if he was merely an apparition, a figment of the imagination, tortured by a waking nightmare. By the end of 2014, the investigation ran cold and the Broadduses were losing their minds. While the letters had not directly threatened their lives, could they take the risk? How could they let their kids play in the backyard while knowing somebody very likely was watching their every move? As difficult as the decision was to give up their dream home six months after the letters arrived, Derek and Maria decided to sell 657 Boulevard. Initially, they asked for a bit more than they had paid, which should have been more than fair after the pricey renovations. However, while the Broadduses had been totally unaware of the unwanted extra that came with the house when they moved in, now the whole of suburban New Jersey had already heard rumors about the Watcher, and a stalker isn't really a great selling point. Understandably, Derek and Maria were frustrated, to say the least. It wasn't just that they couldn't move into the house, but now they weren't even able to get rid of it. The situation eventually led to the Broadduses filing a lawsuit against the previous owners, John and Andrea Woods. The suit claimed that the sellers had maliciously withheld critical information from the Broadduses out of fear of losing the house sale. And the judge did not agree. The reason was that since the Woods had lived in the home for 23 years and received just one letter from the Watcher, 
How could they have known the letters would keep appearing after they were gone? In addition, the law only requires homeowners to disclose physical elements associated with the property, meaning you can keep your mouth shut about things like undesirable neighbors or troublesome letters from anonymous multi-generational house stalkers. By early 2017, as the lawsuit was dismissed and still nobody wanted to buy 657 Boulevard, the Broadduses decided to rent it out. And what happened two weeks after the tenants moved in? Another letter was sent to the Broadduses. And this time, the tone was more disturbing than any of the letters that came before. You wonder who the Watcher is? Turn around, idiot. Maybe you even spoke to me. One of the so-called neighbors who has no idea who the Watcher could be. Or maybe you do know and are too scared to tell anyone. Good move. Maybe a car accident. Maybe a fire. Maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away but makes you feel sick day after day after day after day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet. Loved ones suddenly die. Planes and cars and bicycles crash. Bones break. If Derek and Maria ever doubted if they had made the right decision to not settle into 657 Boulevard, surely all doubt melted away after this delightful piece of written expression. Fortunately, after this letter, which was received in 2017, the Watcher has not contacted the Broadduses since. Still, what really marked the end of the family's nightmare was finally signing the sale agreement of the quote-unquote haunted house in early July 2019. The Broadduses lost a good chunk of money in the process, approximately $400,000, but perhaps it's a small price to pay for peace of mind. But some of the other residents in the neighborhood of 657 Boulevard weren't as scared of the watcher letters as they were angry. The Watcher was still out there. He hadn't been caught. He hadn't been identified. There wasn't a shred of evidence to suggest who the Watcher could have truly been. There have been some theories, however. Some suggested a schizophrenic neighbor of the Broadduses, but there was no evidence to support the claim. Some even say that Derek faked the whole thing, that he was actually the Watcher, and, due to buyer's remorse, created this crazy story of a stalker to break the deal. But would somebody really bring such hell upon themselves and their family, especially with the $400,000 loss? It's hard to believe anyone would, but then again, there is the small fact that Derek Broadus actually wrote anonymous letters to his neighbors. The typed letters sent by Derek accused several of the recipients in Westfield of speculating inaccurately regarding quote, the owners of 657 Boulevard, and made him out to look like the bad guy. The letters were signed, Friends of the Broadus Family, likely to give the impression that the Broadduses had their own anonymous writers who were willing to fight back. However, Derek admitted to writing the letters immediately when asked but said he only did it as he felt driven into a corner and tired of people blaming him for the horrible situation his family was in. Nothing has ever proven he had anything to do with the stalker letters. As for now, the case remains an ongoing mystery that awaits answers, a conclusion. As Netflix bought the rights to the creepy and bizarre story in 2019 and is creating a horror miniseries, which they'll almost undoubtedly fuck up, the case of the Watcher will breathe new life on the screen. But in real life, only time will tell. Or maybe not. The truth is, as long as we don't know who the Watcher is, we can only assume they're out there, still watching. 
As of now, there have been no reports from the new owners of the home regarding any letters having been received. It's unknown whether they haven't received any, or perhaps they're just keeping the letters they've received private in order to starve the watcher of attention, or because they don't want the media poking around their property in search of a story. Or perhaps the watcher is just biding their time, watching, waiting, to tug back on the strange and mysterious connection that keeps them tethered to that house. It's like the Watcher said in one of the cryptic letters. I will rise again. I will be patient and wait for this to pass and for you to bring the young blood back to me. Thank you for watching. If you like this kind of dark and mysterious content, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications now because you won't want to miss what's next. And please rate this video and comment below. Although YouTube removed dislikes in order to protect massive corporations from receiving visible backlash so they can more easily spread their agenda to unwitting people, I can still see them on my videos. Your feedback helps my content grow and helps me to know how to improve for you and it only takes a second. So thanks again, and remember, you may not believe it, but anything is possible in a world so seriously strange. Watch the shadows and stay alive out there.